Good morning, welcome to Planet Mojo. Today I need to get the mounting board and the F and J molding on the top of the partition wall. First thing I gotta do is trim that foam, just the bottom part that's sticking out right below the joist there. Then I need to see if any of these plastic caps are above the surface. If they are, I'll have to tap them in a little bit deeper. What we have is three 12 foot long boards. These are one by six. What I'm gonna do is trim these down to a one by four and take out any warp or anything like that while I'm at it. Then I need to get up there and figure out how they're gonna go in. I can do like the seam, they're 12 foot long, so one of them would come to right here, but I don't know if that's a good idea because I wanna pocket screw them up into the joists as well. So I'll probably do the seam a little bit past the joist on both the ends and do a shorter one in the middle. Yeah, that's the plan. They're gonna be pocket screwed up into the joist and then wherever there's a stud, we have tons of studs here, it's gonna be screwed into the stud and I believe, yeah, I got a top plate up there too, so lots of stuff to screw into, but we have this is how it is. We have inch and a half foam and then a board attached to it like, like this. So the board is actually cantilevered out an inch and a half from the next solid structure. So we need a fair amount of screws, otherwise it can start to sag over the years. That's why we're gonna pocket screw it up into the joists as well. It seems like an easy job, but it's gonna be kind of a bear. So once all three of them are up there and they're gonna be pocket screwed to each other as well, then I gotta cut my F and J molding. I believe, yeah, it's three pieces of this as well. And then this has to be drilled and this will be nailed to the board. So yeah, I was hoping I could get the last of the tin in today, but that's just not gonna happen. This is gonna take a good amount of time. And when I cut these boards, I'm thinking I can leave the saw just where it is, move the stuff out of the way, and then saw right out the door. Just move this and saw right out the door. Yeah, that'll work. Otherwise, I gotta move the saw all the way over here and saw out the door that way. So I'm thinking it's gonna be easier to do this on the scaffolding. So I'm gonna to need to sweep up a little bit and get everything ready for that. Roll the scaffolding over there. And then, yeah, we'll just have to move it a couple times, get all of the stuff that's in the way of where the board's gonna go out of the way and we can get going with this. All right. This is all I should need, a sharp knife, a board to gauge, and a hammer to nail any of these plastic caps in. So, well, I guess I gotta trim this one real quick. And that's all I need to trim. Just the part below the joist. And I can see already this one is proud. And that's because it's not hitting anything.
All right. Now, a little more. Oh no, it's hitting the metal. So that is good. And the rest of that's good as well. So, I'll have to move the ladder just between the joists every time and work my way all the way down to the other end. Okay, all done with the trimming and flushing up. I also added a little bit of foam to some of the gaps up here along the way as well. I'm going to add a little bit more to this stuff as well, like right here. But pay that no, never mind. So now what I'm going to do is go up to that joist right there, measure two inches this way, put my laser level, or not laser level, laser measurer, I guess that's what you call it, laser measurer, put that on the line and shoot over to the F and J molding, and that'll be my length. Once I get my boards trimmed down to width, I'll cut both this one and that one to that length, and then I'll get the length in between using the laser measure again. But once I get that cut, I'm gonna put it up in place, clamp it in place, and I'm gonna notch it a little bit for them joist hangers so that it sits flush up against the joist. That way the pocket screw will hold it nice and tight up against there. Good, good, good. Oh, and while I'm doing that, I'm gonna mark where the joists are, or where, geez, I'm gonna mark where the studs are and pre-drill all that. So a lot of machining on this wood. All right, let's get this and a marker and we'll go get that dimension. So, two inches over is right there. Turn this on. Okay, and then we're going to want to put the back of it on there and shoot it right against the flat part. I'm not sure if you'll see that or not. Shooting it right on the flat part. And we have 11 feet, seven and five eighths inches. All right, now I gotta deal with this stuff. It's not too bad, just gotta move this barrel. I believe my table saw height is higher than these panels over here, so I should be able to run right through there. I just got to set up my roller and I'm going to move this over here because I got to cut this stuff to length too. I hate cutting into the shop because these miter saws are such a mess, but I don't have enough room to cut it in here and there's too much snow out there to move it out there. So yeah, I really wish I had a shop set up so I don't have to worry about this stuff. All right, let me get this stuff moved around. We'll get these boards cut and then start machining them. Okay, I'm all set up. I checked this board going that way and it just lightly rests on the tin, which is great. Got my roller set up over here. I gotta open the door and it is very cold out there, but luckily the wind is coming from that direction, so we won't have wind blowing directly in the shop, but it's gonna get cold in here fairly quick. We're gonna be cutting these at, I believe I have it set at five. Then we'll turn it around and cut it. Oh, I'm gonna to have to make sure I'm good on that. I believe I'm gonna go with four inches, yeah. So it's set at five right now. Cut all of these once, turn them around, cut them at four, and we can close the door real quick. Then I'll get two of them cut to that length for either side. And with any luck, I'll be able to get those in before lunch. Oh, let me see. No, I won't. Got a half hour. All right, let's get going on this. 
make sure I get my ear protection in. Okay, just wasted about a half hour looking for my number 10 countersink. Never did find it. I have this, it's either a 12 or a 14, looks like a 14. I'm just going to have to go real easy on the countersink itself and go real easy on driving the screws. I don't want to overdrive them because it'll just crush the board into this foam and I don't want that. I have the board up there, it's in place. I marked the joist there and there. I gotta put a mark here, then I'll pull that down. I'll get it pocket screwed. Then I'm just gonna go right back up there with it and get it pocket screwed up. Well, actually, I'll probably screw it to the wall first. Kind of a combination. Get a couple screws into the wall to pull it nice and tight, then pocket screw it up in a place where it's clamped. I'll show you that in a minute. Let me get this other mark on there and get this pocket screwed real quick. Then we'll get it fastened in place. All right, just like I said, I clamped this nice and tight up to the joist. It's actually hung up on the joist hanger, but that's fine. So I've got it nice and tight up there, then put two screws along the side of it in place and then put that screw up into the joist there and she's nice and flat against the wall and as tight as it can get up to these joists. When I put the F and J in there, that'll be right up to the joists. This line right here is at an inch and a quarter that should hit the top plate, but there's places where it's not going to, so I'll have to go lower or whatever I have to do to hit the top plate in those places. It doesn't matter if there's a extra hole there or not. 
and we got two screws down at the end. This thing is in there incredibly tight. Now I'll put some more screws over here once I move the scaffold and get it fastened up into that joist. Then I'll move on to the other side and finally we'll get that middle piece in there. All right, let's move this over. It is taking forever to get this done. Forgot to mention, the last thing I did on the saw with this board was relieve the top just a little bit. That's so that the F and J coming in from the side will go over the top like that. It's kind of hard to see, but that F and J will sit nice and flat on the top of there. All right, let's get this done. Okay, I have both ends in. Now I got a measure for my center one. This might be a little hard to do. There we go. Okay, not sure if you can see that. Eleven foot, one inch and three quarters. None of this shows in the final wall. So I'd rather cut this a sixteenth shy and it'll probably fit perfect than Cut it exact and then have to come back and trim a little bit off. And we're going to be cutting both ends as per usual because these factory ends are almost always crooked because they're cut before it's completely dry. All right, we got the backer board completely in. This was actually the hard part. The F and J is not that hard. Each one gets a cut, and I believe one of them gets two cuts. There's going to be three pieces up there. Once I get them cut, I got to drill it. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see that or not on the other stuff. I have it about every 8 to 10 inches, so it's a good amount of holes. I'll be doing more nailing than anything else. So let me take a quick break and we'll get back here and put this F and J in. All right, I made a mistake on how many pieces I'll be putting in. These are only 10 foot 6 inches, 10 and a half feet. So I'll have to put four of these in. On these, this end is going to be just a butt end. And on the other end, this is the corner, so it's bent up. I just use my bender for that, but basically I cut away a half inch of everything except for this part right here. This is the only thing that shows once you have a panel in here and a panel in here. Nothing else shows but this. So this will lap onto the one going this way 
and then once you get the ceiling in there and the wall panel in there nothing will show I have my holes all drilled what I'm thinking I'm gonna have to do and I'll have to find that I have a board and on these sides what I did was just screw it in to that top girt and it has like a taper at the top and I held it in place with that I just saw that I kept it around just for this here it is right here so what I do because these are 10 feet long they're kind of hard to handle I just stand right in the middle and screw this in so I'll have to screw it through the foam and into a stud may not be that easy but shouldn't be too bad get that in there and it doesn't have to be perfect it just holds it in place while I get a few nails in then it's easy from there on so we'll get this ready and I got to move this down to the end we'll get all that stuff ready and I'll get the first one in and then I will show you on the second one I rushed ahead a little bit and got two of them in. Hopefully you could see that. Show you how I get these up there. The end of this one has that little tab. And what I do is get it get it butted up against the last piece big dummy supposed to have this get this staged right where it needs to go I already shaved the blob of foam off get my driver ready now do this get the tab over the last piece and get it butted up then, hopefully you can see this pretty well. I have this right over the stud. Beautiful. Now, with that temporarily held in place, I can adjust this, get it nice and perfect. Remember, only this part shows. I'll get rid of the pencil line a little bit later. I have one piece a little bit less than four feet long at the end. It's getting really late. but I want to get this finished tonight. So we're going to keep going until it's done. When I put the wall panels on, they're going to be right flush with this, about flush. And then I'll be putting a piece of molding up in here and it'll cover that seam. Not exactly sure how I'm going to do it yet, but the other one will get the panel all the way up into the, into the F and J. All right, I want to push it up. don't think I'm going to need this helper on that very last one down there. 
but we'll see. Move the scaffold down and get the rest of those nails in. And I'm going to move it all the way down. Thirty five and seven sixteenths. All right, I got my last piece cut, and we have a tab on this end and a tab on this end, and this one goes into the corner and needs to be bent. Hopefully this fits. We're going to test fit it. Then drill the holes. And hopefully wrap things up. All right, that's going to work. I got a gap here, but that's not going to show. Like I said, this is the only part that shows right here. And I would rather have this nice and tight against here. Once all the stuff's in here, you won't be able to see any gaps at all. All right, beautiful. Let's get some holes drilled.
right, beautiful. All right, we got her done. I didn't think I was gonna be able to get this done today, but we got her done. Next thing to do on this is to get the panel in. Let me show you how that's gonna go. This is the siphon edge. This goes over the panel that's already up there. And it's gonna be about right here, about that much of the panel. I gotta cut it all the way down and put three strips in there. Yeah, that's gonna be interesting. It's gonna have a flat part going into the opening up there. So I may have to rivet it to that. I don't know, we'll see, because I'll be putting a screw right up through there. So if it kind of sags down in the middle, when I'm up on top, I'll put a rivet through it and that should hold it just fine. Yeah, looking really good. So an update on the weather, it's supposed to get 11 below zero tonight. And then tomorrow it's supposed to be about three or four degrees during the day and at night. So kind of a uni weather day. And then after that, for the foreseeable future, it's gonna be in the 30s and pushing 40. We actually have rain in the forecast for next week. So it's gonna be really nice for a while. That'll give me time to get up there and do all the taping and insulating of that last row. Then this place will be pretty well sealed up. I have that opening there, the opening there, and the opening there, but there's really no rush to get them plugged unless we have another polar vortex like this. I wish I had the thermometer out here, the gun thermometer. I'd like to get the temperature of that wall on a cool day. Yeah, I should plug those anyways. I also wanted to get the temperature of the flue pipe on the inside and in that thimble there. So I'll probably do that next video I make. And like I said, the next video will be finishing up the ceiling. So if you wanna see that, make sure you subscribe and click on the update icon. If you have any questions or comments, make sure you put them in the comment section below. And if you share the video and or give it a like, it helps the channel out greatly. Thanks for watching and have a great day.